Welcome to the Uncle's channel. Thanks for watching today. And I'm a little bit late to the party here, but let's talk about World Championship NES Edition for the Nintendo Switch. Now, there are two things I truly do love and adore in this life, and one is the NES, the regular Nintendo I had for many, many years before I got any other system. It is the uh, system of my childhood. So I have this entire collection behind me of games. I love and adore the system. And the other thing is championships, because anytime me and my friends play a game, we always have a championship at the close of our gaming session to see who is the ultimate victor for the night. And so the idea that there's a NES championship here is just simply a match made in heaven for someone like me. However, even though this game sounds like it's going to be a multiplayer blast, I actually think this game holds up better as a single player experience rather than a party mode. But um, the party mode definitely has its fun to be had, but I feel like you're going to play it more and get more uh, serious about the game when it comes to the one player mode. So let's talk about all the different things that are included in World Championship NES Edition. Now when you load the one player mode up here, there are various different game modes that you can choose from, but the crux of the game here, or the uh, ones you're going to end up playing the most, is going to be the speedrun mode. And uh, when you load up here, there are many different NES games that you can choose challenges from. You can choose Mario 1, 2, and 3, the Lost Levels, which I hate that game beyond all measure, and I dread completing the challenges for that one. Zelda 1 and Zelda 2, Metroid, Kirby, Ice Climbers, Balloon Kid, Excite Bike, Donkey Kong, and Kid Icarus. So there are a lot of different NES games that you can choose from, but it's not going to be the full game of any of those. It's just sort of be uh, separate obstacles or separate uh, challenges sort of cherry picked throughout those individual games to give you an individual obstacle or individual objective to accomplish. So like, for example, let's just take Mario 1 here. There are normal challenges, like something like get the mushroom as fast as you can. It takes like five seconds or less. There are hard challenges, which are going to be like finish 1-1. One one. takes you like 20 to 30 seconds. There's going to be the master challenges, which are going to be like go through a cheap, cheap level. And if you know much about cheap, cheaps, they're very cheap. No one knows why they name them cheap, cheaps, because it's sort of a cheap kill. I don't know. If you know why they call them cheap, cheaps, let me know in the comments down below. And then the uh, final or the legendary category is going to be to complete the entire game using the warp zones and it shouldn't take you more than like eight or nine minutes but every time you finish a challenge you're going to get a ranking all the way from a s ranking which is like super fast pretty much a flawless run through that particular challenge all the way down to a, probably a C or D ranking. I don't think I ever got quite that low, but basically if you just simply finish the challenge, you're going to get some sort of ranking for just uh, completing it here. And uh, every time you complete it, you are going to get some coins and you can use those coins to unlock more mini games or you can use those coins to unlock different pins, which we'll get to in just a second. But uh, to me, the main fun of this game is going to be trying to figure out how to get an S ranking on every one of these individual challenges. Because as you're going through it, you have to like almost map it out. Like what is the perfect run in order to get that S ranking. And so it's more like a puzzle than it is going to be a uh, normal platformer here because you have to just like really think about it, map it out, figure out, okay, I need five coins over here. What's the best path to get those last five coins? I don't want to waste any time as you go. And it really makes you, I guess, have the mindset of a true speed run. And I don't speed run games in any form or fashion, but like this is as close as I'm probably going to ever get to it. And I'm having like all of these individual challenges to get an S ranking on. I just truly do love this particular mode of the game. And even the games I like don't really care for a whole lot, like Balloon Kid, I find myself sucked into it trying to get these S challenges, even though I don't like particularly enjoy that game, or like Ice Climbers, there's just simply something about getting that S ranking that is that, uh, just a little bit of dopamine hit and makes you very feel very satisfied for getting it. And um, there are so many challenges throughout here, it just really uh, enriches the overall single player game experience. And like I said, every time you get a ranking, whether it's the highest ranking or the lowest ranking, you got a ranking here, you're going to get some coins for it, unlock more games. But let's head over to the sprite section here because you can use these coins to unlock different sprites and the sprites you can use for your uh, symbol to represent your individual character. You don't get to play as that character, which would be um, a sort of cool feature here, but you can unlock all these different sprites to represent who you are as a character. And that's pretty cool here. The first ones I uh, unlocked, it was all the Mario 2 because I just truly love the wacky world of Mario 2. And I picked this old, um, I don't know, it looks like a, uh, I've always felt it looks like a cane growing up, like a little horse cane. I don't know, this is the symbol I selected for my overall character, and I could not be more satisfied with that. But you're never going to be like short on coins, because in order to get that S ranking, you're going to try it so many times, and you're going to keep getting more and more coins, and so like you're going to get everything unlocked in the game pretty fast, and you're never going to be like, oh my gosh, now where's the grind coming into play to get these coins? They're just going to come very naturally just by playing the actual game which um, I think is a pretty big plus. You also get pins throughout the experience as well. Anytime you get an A ranking or above, you get a pin. And those are uh, less special because an A ranking is not really hard to get. I'd rather the pins be awarded for an S ranking, but you know, A ranking is uh, fine for that. Now the next single player mode we're going to talk about is the World Championships. And every week Nintendo is going to choose five of the individual speed runs from the other game mode. And they're going to have everyone in the entire world to compete to see if you can get the fastest time on that particular mini game 
or that particular uh, objective. And you can do all five of them, or you can do one of the five. It's completely your choice here, but you simply want to get the fastest time all around the world. And you can play it as many times as you want to, get the highest rank that you want to, but um, you don't ever know the results until the end of the, end of the week. And to me, that's like a little bit disappointing here because like when you're competing against someone, you want to sort of know like what is the score you're competing against and um, you know how hard you want to try. I mean, obviously you want to try your hardest, but if you're like four or five seconds away from the world record, and it's a really short objective, you're probably going to move on to another one instead of just sort of beating your head against a wall here. It's like when you're playing a game and you don't know how much like HP the boss has. It's always annoying, like not knowing like how close you are. So like I wish Nintendo would just simply update this like every day to sort of have an idea of like who's in the lead, what is their closest time, so you can sort of know what you're working toward. If that had this function on there, I think the World Championships would be a way more fun game mode. But as it stands, it's still um, it's still pretty fun. Now, there's also the uh, survival mode, which is very much akin to like Mario Run, because you match up with seven other people around the world, so eight total, and you race against their ghost on uh, three individual speedrun challenges. And uh, there are eight people in the first one, the top four move on to the next round, and the top two compete for the last round. And it's fun, but like it's not as fun as like if there's like live players just playing against a ghost. And um, I don't know, to me, that's like not the max amount of fun that you could have here. And like I said earlier, there is a pin collection you can look at as well. Now, the party mode is what most people bought this particular game for. And truth be told, it's why I bought this game. Because I had high hopes of playing against my friend Jason, and seeing him as the ultimate champion on all of these old NES games. And um, it's pretty fun, but it's just simply not as much fun as I hoped it would um, be here. Now, when you load it up, you do get to pick a character. And you don't actually get to choose your character. It's just like a roulette here. And you do have to choose a random character. There are like... 100 or 200 sprites that you could choose from. Why don't they let players just simply pick their individual character for the multiplayer? I mean, it's a very small thing, but like it really does sort of um, bother me. Now, when you load up, there are two different game modes you can play. You can do the collection pack, or you can pick one game at a time. If you do one at a time, you sort of have the uh, overall selection of all the games. You load up, you play through it, and whoever wins first, you know, you you know, have bragging rights for winning first. That's simple as that. There's the collection pack, which sort of assembles a group of different games together. You can do easy, normal, hard, or very hard. It sort of gives you an idea of like how long the individual challenge is going to take. But um, when you do this, every game is done like an individual game. And you load up, and um, it's just very, I guess, um, time consuming. Because you load up like the five second challenge, everybody has to agree to it. You have to look at the overall demo here. And by the time you actually get to play the game, you take more time reading the instructions than you do actually playing the game. And um, I really wish it would just sort of like combine all of the different mini games together or all the different obstacles together and you just run through all of them as fast as you can so you can see so you can actually complete the course the fastest. I am very much akin to it like um, Dr. Mario and Tetris on the SNES. Like they have two different game modes, two different games, sort of squish them together. When you finished one, you moved right on to the next one and um, you sort of try to, you know, leave the other player in the dust. Where this one, you know, you only focus on one individual challenge at a time. And I mean, it's just how the game chose to do it, but it's just simply not not my favorite way to do it. And every time you finish an individual uh, objective here or individual uh, challenge, you are going to get points based upon your place value. So if you win first place, you get 12 or 15 points. Second place gets 12 points. And uh, if you only play with two people, it doesn't really matter like how fast you do it. Like if you're super fast, you're still going to get 15 points, even if you're S rank. And if you're like D ranking in your second place, you're still going to get 12 points. And so like, there's no like, I don't know, like motivation to get like a really higher ranking against your friend. Your goal is just simply to beat them. And I understand it's just simply how the game is made, but I, I personally would prefer it to be based upon your ranking here to mix the points up a little bit more. Now, if you had more than two players, like eight players, the way they're doing the point system is probably fine. But if it's only two players, it should definitely be based on rank over the uh, place value. And um, the other complaint I have on the party mode is just simply let like people make their own packs of games they want to play or challenges. You have like a hundred different challenges here. Let players go through and sort of, uh, you know, together pick out which, you know, 10 or 20 or 15 or however many you want to do. And sort of push them all together to make your own individual challenge. And I really feel like that'd be a huge plus for the party mode as well. But um, overall, as it stands, the party mode, I feel, is a little bit on the lacking side. And um, it, would, it has a lot of potential, but I feel like it is just simply, like I said, lacking, and it could be a heck of a lot better. And also, before I forget about when you're doing the party mode, only the first player's sound gets projected. So like if you're doing two players, only the uh, first person's sound is actually heard for the speakers, which um, not a huge deal, but it's like, why? Like Mario Kart on the SNES could do it. Why can't NES World Championships on the Nintendo Switch also allow both players to uh, hear their individual sound? I don't know, small complaint, but it, it still bothered me on that. But um, overall, like if you're looking for a single player NES experience, 
top tier when it comes to um, the speedrun challenges. I truly do love it. I'm addicted to it. I'm constantly, you know, playing through it, trying to get all these S rankings. For what reason? Probably no reason really, just simply because I enjoy the game as an overall. The uh, World Championships is a fun thing to sort of mess around with, but not necessarily a, um, a key component of this game. We'll have enough replayability to continue hop into it. It might, we'll sort of see. Survival mode, eh. Party mode, eh. But if you had more players, it could be a heck of a lot of fun. But overall, I'm satisfied with the purchase here. I think it'd probably been better suited for like a $20 game maybe. But um, if you played $60 for the collector's edition, and um, I don't know, the collector stuff, you know, hit or miss, depending on you know who you are. But uh, this game is not a $60 game. I wouldn't even say it's hardly a $30 game. I'd probably say a uh, $15 and $20 game, and you're going to get your money's worth out of it, at least for the single-player value alone. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check my other videos listed up above. As always, go out there, find a great game to play. Simply have a great rest of the day.